Do you ever look at the photo and think to yourself, what makes this photo good? There's more to photography than just pointing and shooting. Composition is key when it comes to taking photos that are both aesthetically pleasing and meaningful. So in today's video, here are seven photography composition rules to know for outstanding photos. Let's start with the one that I use often and that is the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is one of the most basic compositional rules in photography. It states when composing an image, you should divide it into nine equal parts by drawing two vertical and two horizontal lines. And you place the main elements at the intersections of these lines or along the path. This creates a sense of balance and harmony in the composition and helps draw the viewer's eyes to the most important part of the image. This is my favorite photography compositional rule because it gives you a simple guideline for creating aesthetically pleasing photos. However, it's important to note that the rule of thirds is not a hard and fast rule and it could be broken or adapted to fit the needs of a particular image. Ultimately, the goal is to create a composition that is visually appealing and effectively communicates the intended message or story. Creating a frame within your photo can help create depth and draw the eyes to the subject and is also another favorite photography compositional technique of mine. This can be done by using natural elements just like trees or rocks or even man-made objects like windows and doorways. And it's called a frame within a frame. You are using the frame to draw attention to your subject. This technique helps create a sense of depth in your photos and makes them more visually interesting. Here are a few examples of how I use a frame within a frame. Lines are used to create a visual path for the viewer's eyes. This can be done using natural elements like the rivers, the roads, the pathways. It can also be accomplished by using a man-made element such as fences, walls, or staircases. Using leading lines helps guide the viewer's eyes to your subject. The easiest way to spot leading lines is to look for hallways, stairs, roads, and any sort of walking ways can be used as a leading line. Here are some examples of leading lines. Next we got symmetry. This is when two sides of an image are mirrored. This can be done naturally by using elements in the environment that have a natural symmetry, or it can be done artificially by using lines and patterns to create a symmetrical composition. Using symmetry in your photos helps create balance and harmony, making them more aesthetically pleasing. Symmetry is best used in landscapes or in architecture photography because it helps create a sense of order in otherwise chaotic scene. A spin-off to looking for a symmetry is to look for reflections because it's a mirrored image. I like to look for reflections whenever I can. I usually find them on windows, reflective surfaces, or puddles and lakes, but these often makes a cool looking shot and it's, it's one that I use often. Patterns are repeating shapes and colors or textures that can be used to create an interesting composition. Look for patterns in man-made elements like tiles, brick walls, or natural elements like sand dunes and rippling water. Using patterns help create texture and visual interest in your photos. Here are some photo examples of patterns. The last thing I want to talk about in photography and the composition 
is something that I use from time to time and it's called color contrast. So what does color contrast mean? In photography, color contrast refers to difference in hue, saturation, and brightness between different colors within an image. It is the degree of separation between colors in a photograph that makes them stand out and differentiate from each other. A high color contrast means that the colors in the image are distinctly different from one another while a low co color contrast means the colors are similar to, or they blend together. And color contrast is an essential element in photography as it can affect the overall mood, the impact and visual interest of an image. Guild photographers often use color contrast intentionally to create a dynamic composition and highlight specific areas of an image. For example, a photographer might use a red subject against a green background to create a striking contrast or a blue subject against a yellow background for a cooler feel. Ultimately, the color contrast is an important tool for photographers to convey emotions, tell a story and engage their viewers. And here are some examples of color contrast. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. These are some of the techniques that I use in my tool bag. And if you did find this video helpful, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel where I do photography and Fujifilm content on this channel. As always, my name is Tung. I'll see you in the next video. I love you.